Hello, I'm Sophie Rovner from the American Chemical Society. Welcome to this news briefing from the ACS Fall 2019 National Meeting in San Diego. We're joined today by Dr. Livia Everlin from the University of Texas at Austin and Baylor College of Medicine. She's studying a mass spec pen for accurate cancer detection during surgery. Dr. Everlin. Hi, thank you, Sophie. Thank you, ACS, for this opportunity. I want to show you a little bit today about the work we've been doing developing the mass spec pen. The vision really was to develop a mass spectrometry device that could be used in surgery for cancer detection. So as you see in the video, this is a handheld device that's connected to a mass spectrometer and triggered with a foot paddle. Once you touch this pen onto a tissue, we designed this PDMS tip, which is a biocompatible polymer, to have three conduits. One to deliver a single water droplet to the tip, and this water droplet, through a very simple chemical extraction process, extracts metabolites and lipids and a few proteins into this liquid medium, which we then transport all the way to the mass spectrometer through a tubing system for real-time molecular analysis. So as you touch this pen in two different regions of the tissue, you can detect molecular profiles that are characteristic of a normal tissue or a cancer tissue. All of this process is performed under 10 seconds per position that we analyze. And we have worked with um, statisticians to develop machine learning algorithms so that we can quickly process the mass spectrometry data and provide a real-time diagnosis. So that a surgeon, as they are performing this surgical, surgical resection, they can know exactly at the point where they're touching the pan if it needs a more resection of the cancer tissue or if they have reached the normal tissue to really improve and optimize um, resection of cancer during surgeries. We have applied the mass spec pen over 700 tissues in my laboratory. We have been testing a variety of, diff of different cancers. Brain cancer, thyroid, lung, breast, ovarian, and pancreatic cancer have been some of our major um, efforts. Um, the analysis, one of my favorite things about it is that it's very non-destructive. So the chemical extraction process with water is very gentle to the tissue, the same way that we take a shower or we use water to make coffee. We're extracting molecules without damaging the tissue. So we have about 97% overall accuracy for cancer detection. And in the last year, we've been testing the mass spec pin in the clinical study where we've been the using the device that you can see being held by a surgeon in vivo, that's a case of breast cancer, as well as on the freshly excised tissue. And we can acquire this data in these fresh tissues and even in the living body and just getting chemical information in real time to help surgeons with um, improving decision making. All right, thank you. We can now open this to questions. If you have a question, please state your name and affiliation. Hello, so my name is, is Kath O'Driscoll from Chemistry and Industry magazine. Um, I was interested because initially I, I was a bit misled. I thought that the mass spectrometer was part of the pen device. Mm -hmm. I wasn't quite sure about the connection. Um, there are smaller handheld mass spectrometer mm -hmm. devices now being developed. Is that something, a route that you might want to go in? I'm just wondering where the mass spec yeah. has got to be in relation to the yeah. pen. Absolutely. So for our current, current, current clinical study, the mass spectrometer is in a roll-in table. So we roll it in into the surgical room and we have it actually installed there, running full time during the periods of our study. So it's still a, a bigger benchtop instrument, um, but the performance is really where we need. So we have really high mass resolving power and, ha and mass accuracy to detect this panel of molecules that we use for prediction. Now there are smaller instruments that are being developed, a lot of effort in the, in the field of mass spec, some of which come from Graham Cook's laboratory at Purdue, who was my PhD advisor, and they are developing um, like a shoebox size mass spectrometer, but the performance is, is a lot lower than, of course, the commercially available instruments. So the vision is to go to smaller instrument, and I would say all the mass spectrometry companies are developing smaller instruments, but at this time we're still using the more sophisticated um, instrument. What range of compounds are you actually looking at as well? I mean, how many um, metabolites and mm -hmm. lipids, et cetera, are you actually looking at? And how many 
are different compared with you know the cancer and the healthy tissues? Yeah, that's a great question. We detect hundreds of metabolites and lipids and a few proteins, and then when we develop our statistical classifiers, we normally reduce the data to a subset of compounds that are highly predictive. So even though we're detecting hundreds of compounds, not all of them are indicative of disease state. So we come down to a panel of, depends on the cancer type, but a 20 um, metabolites, um, glucose, ascorbic acid is normally in our models, fatty acids like oleic acid, arachidonic acid, and then complex lipids like glycerophosphocholines, glycerophosphoserines are normally in our models as well. But it depends on the cancer type, and because mass spectrometry has such a high level of chemical specificity, we can even subtype cancers based on the abundance of these molecules. So it's not only cancer and normal, but we can tell in real time this is an X subtype of cancer. So it's very powerful in that way. And of course, I'm interested to know about the results from mm -hmm. the latest surgery. Mm -hmm. um, have you any indication as to how much healthy tissue you could save using this type of technology? Yeah, so we, we are not approved to give that type of clinical information to the surgeon. So as our clinical study right now, um, per the IRB review, it's the review board that oversees human subject research to minimize any risk to the patients. We're mostly acquiring data in a blind manner, so we're not providing any input to the surgeon. So we do data analysis after surgery. And there have been a few cases where we detected normal tissue where the surgeon thought it was still cancer. So it would be an example um, in the breast cancer case where if we could have given that information to say actually that's normal, some of the tissue could have been spared. And we've had other situations as well where we detect it as um, cancer or in the thought was that it was normal. And it, again, we could have made an impact there. But this is really early experiments. We really need a large um, number of patients to, for me to be able to tell you that's our performance. So right now it's just early but pretty exciting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so I was curious, um, the mass spec pen is attached to, uh, to a benchtop mass spectrometer. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, what type of mass spec or model is it that gives you the results in 10 seconds, you said? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the mass spectrometer that we've been using is an Orbitrap mass spectrometer. Um, it's a really high uh, performance system that we have in the clinic. And the mass spectral analysis is actually the fastest step. So we can get a mass spectrum in milliseconds. The slow process really is touching. We, we wait about three seconds on tissue to get a good extraction. And then transporting the droplet is a few seconds, depending on the length of the tubing. And then once it reaches the mass spectrometer, it just immediately, we have a transfer tube that is um, about 400 Celsius. It evaporates the droplet, ionizes the compounds, and we get a mass spectra pretty much immediately. So the slow steps are still on the sampling size rather than in the mass spectra analysis. Oh, okay, I see. Thank yeah. you. You're May I ask you to provide your name and affiliation, please? Uh, oh. on, on the, mm -hmm. uh, I'm Andrew Appel with IBO, Instrument Business Outlook. Hi, Katie Cottingham from the American Chemical Society. So what do surgeons normally do these days to get that information, and how is this an advantage, the mass spec pen? Okay, that's a great question. Um, so it depends on the surgeon, on the institution. In um, a large amount of cases, surgeons still use frozen section analysis, and that is when the tissue that's resected, so that specimen, is sent for a pathologic evaluation in real time. So they take that specimen and they freeze the tissue and section and stain it, and the pathologist will look under a microscope and see, based on the cells and their structure and their morphology, if there still looks like there's cancer or normal at the margin. And um, that's, you know, it's been a powerful approach, but it's been used for uh, over 100 years, and it can be subjective. It can depend on the skill of the, the skill set of the pathologist. There are areas of subspeciality that not all the hospitals have, a pathologist that's a specialist in certain um, cancer type. Um, and it's also a lengthy process. Um, depending on the amount of surgeries, it can take um, 30 minutes to get a response. And during that time, the patient is just open, um, the surgeons are waiting, and, you know, 
know, there's incredible cost to that too, as you are extending length of the surgical resections. Um, and so what the MassPAC Pen division was to empower the surgeons to be able to be doing that analysis themselves in the operating room. So if a surgeon imagine that she is resecting a tumor and there is um, uncertainty if that's normal or cancer, while it's still in the patient, if it is normal, the analysis is non-destructive. So there's no alteration to the tissue. So you could sample that region and keep it in the patient to really spare um, additional resection. But also not only margins, but just the confirmation of diagnosis in real time could also uh, be very beneficial in cancer surgeries, but also benign surgeries where the goal there is just to type tissue. So um, we see, you know, being able to provide chemical, molecular information, a much more precise way to help um, surgical resections. So, yeah. and are there uh, non-surgical or non-medical applications for the mass spec pen? Yeah, so we have been um, so so we've been exploring applications outside of um, biomedical field. Um, we have been using the mass spec pen for analysis of um, drugs in different samples um, and, and kind of forensic applications, um, analysis of pesticides and agricultural applications. Um, we've been looking at natural products and, and animals and, you know, we can analyze a, a living animal and not um, cause any damage to um, the organism. So yeah, we've been exploring a variety of applications, so there's a lot to be done. Uh, Bill Buslig, ACS. Uh, I presume that uh, this technique is actually uh, applied just at the uh, at the prep portion of surgery, like before uh, be before any cutting is done. Uh, mm -hmm. Done, uh, since uh, part of the the issue is, of course, uh, be able to remove uh, margins to uh, to some extent and so forth. Uh, is there some uh, some way that uh, that you can uh, give them an idea that okay, move a little over, uh, over because once once you start cutting, of course, all the bleeding is happening, mm -hmm. and 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 you add a, a drop of uh, of liquid of any sort, uh, sort, it carries blood with it mm -hmm. and whatever have you, and so is the, is there some uh, uh, some provision for that, or or mm -hmm. what's what's the recommendation currently? Yeah, that, this is a great point. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, our major concern, actually, one of our major concerns going to the clinic was blood. Um, when we were doing analysis ex vivo in the lab, of course, all of these tissues are f fresh, but they are not, they don't have like blood flowing through. Um, so when we went to the clinic, that was a concern. And what we have realized, and I think in the last picture, um, if you want to go to the next one, you see that's a case of breast cancer in vivo right there, and the tumor has been removed. So we actually do the analysis before and after cutting. And if there is extensive bleeding, no surgeon really operates with extensive bleeding. They immediately cauterize and stop the bleeding. And they even clean the, the, the field to be able to see what they're cutting. So at least in the surgeons we've, with the surgeries we've been working with and the surgeons that we have um, collaborated, they don't operate with extensive bleeding. But there is, of course, some blood at the surface. And what we have realized is that we get a lot more blood-related peaks in our mass spectrum. So we're detecting heme, we detect hemoglobin, globin, which before we didn't detect the higher abundance in the ex vivo tissues. But the beauty of mass spectrometry is that the resolution is so high and we have so, so a high level of chemical specificity that we can still detect all of our other compounds as well as heme and hemoglobin. So it hasn't been impacting our ability to do predictions because we can still detect the molecules that are predictive of disease state. So for the majority of the cases, we've been doing analysis actually after cutting in regions that might be suspicious. Now, uh, this, uh, this technique uh, appears to be f uh, quite applicable to a lot, of, uh, a lot of solid tumors and whatever have you. Uh, what about vascular tumors yeah. where, where there is uh, no. uh, there is a very very active blood flow like uh, yes. uh, like it's it's kind of flooding the place? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think that would be an intended use um, for the device. We are really focusing on solid tumors in specific surgeries and cancer where um, we know there is a critical need for margin evaluation. A, a clear example is breast, of course, where. Um, 
presence of tumor at the very outside of the specimen is considered a positive margin because we are a surface analysis technique. So we can mostly detect the first few cell layers. So breast is really applicable in lumpectomies, um, prostate cancer as well. Once the prostate is removed, um, the surgeon would like to, to um, analyze the nerve bundle to see if there's any prostate cancer remaining there. Um, the gland as well to see if there's any prostate cancer um, kind of disrupting through the prostate um, capsule. So there's specific case where it would be really valuable pancreatic cancer as well. But for other like blood related um, cancers, I, I don't think really there's an application there because we really want to avoid interference from biofluids such as blood. Thank you. Yeah. Any further questions? A very quick one, just Absolutely. to ask about the concentrations of the um, things that you're actually measuring in the mass spec. What, what are the concentrations of the metabolites <laughs> or sort of ranges of? Yeah, so we don't quantify concentrations. We haven't done that um, in our analysis. So um, different from traditional, I would say, metabolomic study where you have an internal standard and you can come out to a, a specific amount, um, we're mostly looking at qualitative changes in abundances. So a lot of our work is in normalizing the data and using statistical methods to be able to do predictions even though these are not absolute amounts. But we're normally looking at shifts in abundances. So it's rare that we would have a biomarker that is absent in normal tissue and present in cancer. It's normally a delta change in the abundance that is indicative of an ab abnormality on the tissue. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much. The archived version of this session will soon be posted at bit.ly slash ACS2019 San Diego. Please join us for our next press conference at 9 Thank you very much.